I have always wondered if Düsseldorf is actually worth visiting. It is the seventh largest city in Germany. It is well known for its fashion, Altbier, Japanese culture, and the television tower. But is this city worth putting on your travel bucket list? Today, with a prepared of list of sights to see, let's explore Düsseldorf. After having multiple train delays and accidentally taking the wrong train, I finally arrived to the city. Sitting in the train already made me hungry, so I had to grab something from the train station. It was between these two bakeries. Le Bag and Camps. And since only one of them had a pudding pretzel, I had to go with this one. For some reason, I just can't get enough of it lately. Now, since my first site is further away from the city center, I need to take a tram. With the help of Google Maps, it was pretty easy to figure out which one to take. And this is exactly enough time to enjoy my pudding pretzel. A bit dry on the bread part, but overall pretty good. The tram didn't fully go to the destination that I wanted to, so for the rest of the way I'll be using my feet, which is usually my preferred method of transportation. This way we get to observe and enjoy the buildings around us. Even if the view is not that incredible or is blocked off by construction, you can see how the city feels. But the weather is pretty nice, it's not too warm and not too cold. The Rhine Tower, a significant Dusseldorf landmark. Built between 1979 and 1980, the tower is 240 meters tall. And up there, there's a spinning 360 Japanese restaurant you can visit. But I'm generally scared of heights and tall buildings, so I prefer to stay on the ground. And a couple of steps after that, I arrived to my second destination. These weird-looking, funky-looking buildings. The Neue Zollhof. Designed by a Canadian-American architect Frank O. Gary. He created three sculptural, organically-shaped buildings that are made out of three different materials, height and expression of shape. Brick, stainless steel and bright white plaster. I believe this architectural style is called postmodernism. Why I'm doubtful is because the website says it's modernism, but I think it's postmodernism because it looks more funky. For some reason lately I've been obsessed with buildings and architecture, so I really like these buildings. But if you're not that interested in architecture, then you can also look at boats or this huge silver pill in the distance. But you have to admit that this is a pretty nice view. From here you can start walking to the city center along the Rhine River. It is incredibly calm and I feel like I could watch this water for hours. From here you can basically see the first image that comes up when you google Dusseldorf, as well as this giant bridge with cars. Dusseldorf has a rich history that dates back to the Roman Empire. Over the centuries the city has developed into an important commercial center, thanks to its strategic location on the banks of the Rhine River. In the Middle Ages Dusseldorf was known for its impressive fortification, beautiful churches and thriving markets. However, it was heavily bombed during the World War II, for obvious reasons. But the city quickly recovered and became the hub of business and commerce post-war Germany. However, like many German cities, it did lose its old charm and became more blunt, grey and straightforward. I mean, building and rebuilding incredibly detailed and intricate houses cost a lot of money, so I get it. But that does not mean that this is a bad city or that it's not worth visiting. It will just rank lower on the list. But Dusseldorf does have some buildings that are worth looking at, like this museum called K21. Apparently this is a three-part museum, so this location is one part of it. These museums have an international reputation as a museum of art of the 20th century, displaying all sorts of post-war and also newer art slash exhibitions. I didn't really have time today to fully visit it, but I really needed to go to the bathroom. And oh lord, it was free and I could easily go in. Great success. This museum was located in the middle of the park. And even though this park is pretty small, it's still quite lovely. And it had a lot of birds and even more birds. So that's quite nice. And now I'm heading to the old town. On the way, there were some quite unique looking buildings. And this one looked big and that it took a lot of money to make. And also I noticed this and this. I don't know why or who put them there, but they do look cute. Then I also stumbled upon a little, which was located right next to the market. Apparently this market is open every day except for Sundays. Even though it is not that big, it was very cute and very aesthetically pleasing. These vendors really do know what they're doing. Like look at this. This looks incredible. This looks straight out of a movie. 
And I love that they also have a potato stand. Where there's so many pot- I didn't even know there's so many potatoes. Even though I was tempted to buy this tiny baby onion, I'll be moving on. We are finally at the old town. Nothing crazy to see, nor breathtaking. There's lots of bars and restaurants, a local beer brewery, even more bars and restaurants, and souvenir shops. I found this amazing looking gift store, but you also have the classic souvenirs, like magnets and dog signs. And if you're too embarrassed to admit you went to Dusseldorf, why not buy a cologne magnet? Maybe you like that city better. And my favorite thing as a graphic designer is to look for the ugliest postcards. And they had a pretty good selection here, might I say. And is this the Indonesian flag? What's happening here? Oh, okay, it's the, it's the Dusseldorf flag. Okay, that makes more sense. And here is the Ferris wheel. It is mainly here during the winter time and they already have a tiny little Christmas market where you can buy a hot drink. And this sexy fox for some reason. I mean, it looks kind of funny, not gonna lie. Right next to all of this, we also have a staircase with a colorful background. I wanted to take a picture there, but I was too embarrassed. Ah, but look at this view. Looks quite nice. When I was visiting Dusseldorf, they were preparing for the Christmas market. And last year when I visited this Christmas market, it was pretty big. Pretty impressive, honestly. All the cities around this area go cocoa for cuckoo for cocoa cuckoo for Christmas. That's for sure. I had a couple of pins left on my map. Right next to this big park that my legs were too tired to explore was the K20 museum. Earlier we visited the K21 and now this is K20. A very cool, big and shiny looking building. Plus they had this really cool and colorful wall. And right across the street you could also see this museum. A contemporary German and European art in 1970s museum. And right next to it is also this cool looking building. Which I don't know what the purpose of this building is. To me it looks like a, some sort of government building. But I'm definitely not too sure. Or I think it's a hotel? Since Dusseldorf is the fashion capital of Germany, generally there's a lot of reasons for this. One of them being that there's 800 showrooms presenting the latest designers and couture creations. They have the Fashion Design Institute and a lot of shopping boutiques. For being the Germany's capital fashion, there's a lot of people that look just like regular people. So it's not like New York or Berlin, where you see a lot of people dressed to impress. All this walking around town Made me hungry, so I should probably get some food. Of course I could get some German food, but since I live in Germany, I eat German food almost every day. And so I have something more interesting planned. Apparently Dusseldorf is home to the largest Japanese community in Europe. And they have an area in Dusseldorf called the Little Tokyo, or Japan on the Rhine. This city and its surrounding regions has hosted Japanese companies since the 1950s. And so there's around 8,000 of Japanese or German Japanese people living and working here. Here you can find many shops, restaurants, karaoke, and not just Japanese, but also Korean, Vietnamese, and Indian food. I was a bit surprised by the size of this place. And by that I mean how far away everything is from each other. I was expecting like a cozy street with way less cars and a bit more color. Something more like this. So there's not much of an atmosphere. Even though all I wanted to do is just to sit down, I had to explore the grocery stores. And wow, usually the Asian stores I visited are much smaller and maybe family owned. There's a huge selection of a lot of stuff. Like look at how many tofus there are. Usually at the supermarket you can just find one. So many soy sauces and sauces in general. A lot of instant noodles and a lot of stuff that I don't even know how to use. They had lots of cute packaged things and also weirdly packaged things. And they had a big variety of pre-made food that looked really good. Plus, they also had a microwave if you would like to eat it here. So many people have told me that I should buy peanut butter in Asian stores in Germany. And this store had a big selection of them, so I took this one and I'll try it. But this is not the only Asian supermarket they have. They have at least three, or at least I found three. Maybe they have more. They probably have more. So I had to check out another one as well. This one had even more people and was also a big store. They even had a fresh fish section. And plenty more things that I haven't seen in my life before. So enough looking, it's time to eat. 
I didn't really know which restaurant is good or bad. I just wanted something within my budget. I found this ramen place and I ordered a traditional Japanese ramen. I love that they sat me down in the lonely corner. And thankfully they had a plug, which was great because I really needed to charge my phone. The food was good. I'm not really a ramen expert, but my tummy is full. And so as the sun set, it's time to go to the train station. While waiting for my train, I was browsing through the bookshop. And I've never seen so many mangas in a train station bookshop. So, is it worth visiting Dusseldorf? Obviously, if you live close by and you have nothing to do on the weekend, why not? You could walk around the river, go shopping for some new clothes. Is this a city you should see if you are visiting Germany for the first time? Eh, probably not. Unless you're visiting this area around Christmas time, then I highly recommend it. It's it's a lot. There's a lot of Christmas here. If you would like to see more of Christmas in Düsseldorf, Duisburg, Essen or Dortmund, maybe check out my visiting nine Christmas markets in one day video. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you like to see more of videos like this, feel free to let me know. If you would like to support my craft, maybe consider buying me a coffee. No pressure, if you want to. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. The peanut butter review. It's pretty good. I recommend it.